Well, hey there, Internet. This is Steve. Welcome aboard. So what I do here is I do two things. I'm building a, a thousand year home using modern materials as well as ancient building techniques. So uh, you're standing right now in a shipping container. It's a 40 foot high cube. So uh, and I'm converting it into a large bedroom uh, suite slash office. So it's eight by 40. And uh, uh, this is my retirement home. So I am living out here on the ranch. I bought a ranch. So I'm also doing restorative agriculture. So the piece of land that I have is, is a very good piece of land. However, uh, it has, um, was clear cut years ago and turned into a pasture. I'm going to guess 40 years ago, 50 years ago. The part that I'm standing in right now is just a mesquite juniper forest or a scrub brush. So I want to restore that to a restorative food forest with uh, oak trees and squirrels. And right now I do have a lot of animals. I've got deer and wildcats and pigs and the whole nine yards. So, but today's deal is I try to get uh, one thing then a day on this shipping container or else I'll never get it done, right? So uh, this is uh, uh, not my full-time job. Uh, I do this in the evening when I'm done with my full-time job. Uh, I have a very interesting day job that pays the bills, and that's a cloud architecture engineer. I like what I'm doing right now with chat, uh, chat GP and all of the AI models. I'm hugely busy. My brain is full at the end of the day. So uh, I'm trying to do, um, I work outside more than I do inside because I don't really have to think farming, if that makes sense. I could just go and do and be in one with Harmony. But uh, here I've been working this week trying to get done on this uh, shipping container all the electrical. Because once I do that, then it's a matter of the insulation, the rock wool that I'm gonna put in, and then drywall, I'm here. I can move in. Uh, from there I can finish my solar and put in my uh, uh, mini splits and just make this part of the shipping container livable. So, uh, as I mentioned, I have two shipping containers. So, uh, the one you're looking at right now is the one that I'm almost done on. My office will be back there, right where my bed is. I put it in temporarily. I do sleep in here, although I have a pop-up trailer as well. Uh, there's a restroom built that I, is in the middle with Jack and Jill. Uh, it'll be pretty good. So, this is the first shipping container that we have. I'll step outside so you can orient yourself. So, there's going to be my bedroom and my master suite with my office. This area here where old Hank is hanging out with me is going to be a uh, great hall. The front part of it will be a media room and the back part of it will be a workshop. Um, pool table, 3D printer, uh, uh, you know, lathe, I don't know, all the things that a man needs to uh, have a workshop. So Hank is, is standing in my living room right now. Uh, there'll be stairs that'll go up to the top and there'll be a poured, I'm going to do a poured uh, 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 concrete roof on both of these. These will be in the form of a Southwest Mission style house. And uh, this part here will be my uh, um, utility room with my uh, uh, water, solar, all of that, as well as a bonus room, which might just be... Uh, a pantry, food pantry, as well as washer and dryer, etc. And then a galley style kitchen. The galley style kitchen, of course, I'm going to uh, model because it's narrow, 8 by 40, right? And 20 foot of that will be galley style. So um, it'll be modeled after something I find in a boat, more than likely. So I've been looking at it. Yeah, it's not that I'd ever buy one, right? But uh, something high quality and uh, I'll put up some things so, uh, for that. But today is, is pretty simple. I'm just going to do one little electric run uh, because I'm starting late because of my regular job. <laughs> I get tangled up on stuff. So anyway, I'm going to do, to do one little electric run. So today I'll pop a hole in here and I'll make an electric run here. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm satisfied with that. I did a late I did a late add and then I'm gonna add can lights up above so I'm still debating where I'm gonna put all of the light switches for that. But let me see if this little narrow spot is big enough for a door. Well I went and checked my uh, door pile and I don't have any more interior doors. Now I'm not gonna cut those out until I build the great hall, but uh, I did want to put them in place. So I'm missing one interior door. I don't do junk door drawers. I don't do modern hollow core or anything. I'm after a thousand year ho ho home. So I do uh, solid doors, right? So 
I don't have the time to build them myself. I could find them usually for a pretty good deal. So I do think I'll end up putting it here. That's only a 30 inch opening though. I'm trying to make everything handicap accessible. So that's a 30 inch opening. I really think I want to use that opening for that particular door. All right, so the other bedroom door is at least a 32, and uh, this is my retirement home that I'm building. So, uh, not to say I'll get old, but I am building this uh, with 36 inch everywhere, handicap accessible. So, just in case I get old, it's, it's just in case you do too. <laughs> so, this this is my third uh, retirement home. I built them, and oh, this is my forever home. And then they become worth too much money. I sell them and move along or uh, I get crowded uh, and then I feel like oh I like a good balance of fun and and rural and when it gets too uh, built up I, I tend to just move uh, following the edge you know of fun and uh, agriculture but hopefully this will be until uh, I'm done so all right so let's make a decision here I am not working off of blueprints as you can see so I'm working off of uh, what suits me and what's in my brain. In this particular case, blueprints probably would have been helpful. Uh, I don't make many uh, errors. So I, I'm going to put in a 29-inch door in there right now that I have just to hold the spot. Uh, and I've decided that I, if I do need to come in through the handicap entrance, I'll come in through the 36-inch door that I'm going to put in because this will be all one suite, one en suite, right? So, and the walls actually push back so that there'll be plenty of the bathroom and office and there'll be plenty of traffic here. So, the second door into this bedroom, I'm going to make a narrow door, a 29-inch door. And I'm going to put that in place right now before I put in the electrical. The sun is setting here, but I think I have enough time for all of that. So, let me jockey this around. That door is really just a placeholder. It's going to be one of the doors that'll be a wall that will move. But I put it in as a placeholder so that it's out of the way and I get an idea that a 30 inch door will fit in there. Instead of using the door jam that's supplied, I'll probably uh, use the frame that's around there and shim it out like that when I ultimately build it. But we'll leave it there for now. Then it feels like the can lights uh, from the room. I could go ahead and leave here. You walk in, you'll flip them. You'll have light if you need light. But I'll leave. I'll put in a light switch here. I'll put in an uh, outlet there, outlet there, outlet there. And then here is where I'll run the uh, conduit for the can lights. I already have kind of conduit up there for the ceiling fan, so I could tap into that as well. There's a conduit for the ceiling fan. I always like to go outside, take a peek where I put that, just make sure it's not along another joist or something weird. So I'll be right back. And then I just use an appropriate hole enlarger to make it the size of the conduit.
and then I clamp it up and then uh, of course uh, the uh, plywood takes a little bit of dimension so sometimes I have to put an extension on this depending on you know if the joist is, or the uh, metal joist is bent a little bit not this time I made it all the way through I'm gonna make a couple of little bends so that uh, the it'll bend out from the power box so the drywall will fit so uh, you know a little 10 degree bend and then back again out and then in and then I'll cut it off and I'll use it where the, for the junction box so that it comes out just right Whoop. showing off in front of the camera I'm likely to make mistakes and I did there I wasn't I didn't pay attention to the bend being parallel to each other so it's got a little little tilt to it won't kill me I'm okay but I get fired if I was working in a commercial thing for that I like to use this little honing stone when I'm done and you know just make sure I brush the burrs away I want a thousand year home so nick and wires doesn't isn't conducive to a thousand years I don't know if I've showed you these uh, little reversible uh, linesman's pliers so there you got a linesman on this side a little wire stripper pliers these are pretty handy I like these I go they're my go-to here for this electrical work all right so now let's I'm gonna knock out the, the electrical box so if I'm not careful and I, I knock them out here it won't fit so I need to knock out from the bottoms and the top and this side so that uh, I can run more electric lines so these are little flush cut ones very small so not all uh, you know I bought uh, this is the problem with buying things as I go I get uh, the right size dimensions that I like I go to a different where uh, I go to a different lumber yard and I get slightly di different dimensions so I kind of have to tune it in every time anyway I'll knock these two out that one that one this one this were the little Little nuts that were missing off the ones first ones I ordered. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. <laughs> My biggest goal right here is just to make sure that I can reach all the screws when I uh, when I install the drywall. <laughs> so I don't know how much of that was off camera. We'll have to zoom it around. All right. Okay, they're all loose fit in there, but I can get to all the screws once the drywall is installed. So let me go ahead and hook up that pipe I bent up. All right, now I got the first one in there. That all gets, it's all easy from here. Popping the hole through that sill plate, that's the hard part. Alright, that was 11 sixteenths on half inch and it didn't work out. Now I now I got a trouble.
Look at that. Missing a little screw in there. See? I told you manufacturers are no longer running quality control. Their quality control departments have all been laid off. Or they're using small children who don't know the difference. I don't know. Nuts are missing. Screws are missing. Makes it hard to build. I'm staggering on these boxes because I'm worried that the uh, outlet won't fit in there and it'll short out against that. High low, high low is what I'm doing. I'm not half bad for eyeballing. It's balanced perfectly on there. Let's see what. That's a little higher than the other one. Fix it up. a little warm in here. I might get a little something to drink before I finish this up. I still don't have AC in this. <laughs> it's this little conic. <laughs> it's a hot Texas. So let me step out and get a little weed going. At night it's perfect. <laughs> Put building in there. Woo, little on the hot side. The evening sex. I gotta move those doors. They're in my way when I for the last one. So looky there. Of course they'd be in the way, right? I'm gonna move them right to there so they could be in the way when I do that. I'm just making sure that the, visually these are centered in the pockets so they look good. And then they're all the same height so as you scan down they'll all be the same height. I'm just using the hammer as a reference. Plus it'll, I tuck it in there it'll hold it up. No! I have mosquitoes in here tonight. Darn it. Working into the evening, I'm bringing in mosquitoes. Last one of four, you know, I could do two. I making a little room for me. So I'll put two outlets in there, or if I need to uh, run something extra from there. Proximity switch or a security eye or anything, I could do that. Oops, darn it. So I broke out the too big a one. I wasn't paying attention, I was talking. <laughs> I can't use them if you gotta plug them, so I can't use that one yet. All right, I can see it's getting low light here. I'm getting tired too, so I need to wash up. Thank you for watching the show. Appreciate those who hang around. I'm, notice I'm not in any hurry to go anywhere. This is a video journal of what I'm doing, decisions I'm making as I go, building off grid. Well, thank you for joining me for this episode. So when I got done, I drilled through the floor and the sill plate. It's metal, and then I enlarged it. 
I put in a uh, junction box that will eventually go up to a light that will run the cams. And then I finish this wall. So right in the center of each of these I've got an electrical outlet and then that's a two panel box there. And I don't think I'll run anything up on that. I think that'll be a terminus. Well, this is Steve, a thousand year home. So I'm running conduit so that, you know, in a hundred years, somebody wants to replace the electric. If it gets brittle, they could pull new electric. Uh, that PTFE supposedly can last 500 years, but we've all seen it gets a little crispy <laughs> and after a hundred and sometimes shorter if uh, people plug too much power in and toast it. So I'm going to try to make this house have it be earth bag wrapped so it should be cool at all times with a large ability to absorb so there'll be a big thermal mass in it. So that should help maintain it as well. Whew, it's hot from all that. All right, I want to thank you. Like, subscribe, follow me along. Bye.